Hey everyone, Hans here. Hope everyone's doing well. I hope that this thing is working. <laughs> so, today I'm going to present everyone with a challenge that I presented to someone that I consider a friend of mine. Um, but maybe I should explain a bit first, I don't know. Hmm. How to begin, where to begin. So I think most of you guys know that I am part of varying circles of people who uh, want to do the right thing by the white race. They want to stand up for white well-being even if they do not necessarily like calling it that. But they want to do the right thing. They want to stand by our ancestors, want to stand by those who are living today, and want to stand by those, want to protect those who are being born right now and will be born henceforth from today. Or have been born just recently and are still defenseless. Of course, that protection reaches out to them as well. You know, only normal, but yeah. And I had a chat in, uh, in one of these groups. People dear to me. People that care as much as I do. I hope also as much as you do who we were talking about oh one of the one of them was sharing about decades of experience garnered through well not really meh, through garnering information not really study i guess study is such a poisoned word these days but gardening information and then doing things with that information, that's important. When you open a book, you also, you know, and also questioning it, right? You open a book, you read it, but you just don't, you know, rinse, repeat, you know, like a, like a computer download info that you read and then run off with it. No, you look at a book and you see what in this book uh, makes sense and what is absolute nonsense. Would have thunk you can do that, <laughs> and so talking about tw 20, 30, 40, well, not 40, <laughs> let's say 20 plus years, so multiple decades of experience in a certain field, in this case, revolver uh, revolving around speech. Wow, <laughs> yeah. As you can tell, perhaps, I'm not going to carry that flag. <laughs> I leave that up to others. Um, but, nonetheless, I had to present him something. That challenge that I mentioned. Because he has all that knowledge and he wants to help our people. He wants to protect the young. He wants to help those who are adults today. And he wants to do right by those who have died by now. <clears throat> and are either in a, you know, just flesh in the ground with only the memories of them still alive. Their descendants at least still alive. Or those who are in another uh, realm now. In the afterlife, if you will. The other world. So, what did I present to him? One of the struggles that he faces, I believe, is that he also wants to live, he wants to live his journey on his own tempo, which is fine. That's absolutely wonderful. It's better than what most people do, just being rushed here and there by society, right? Living by the clock, not by their own physical uh, rhythm, their psychological rhythm. You know, as it would have been in a natural environment. But then, how is anyone ever going to hear about all that experience that he has accumulated, all that knowledge? I mean, he shares it with those few he talks with. But that is only a few people. And these few 
are also involved in their own works, their own uh, personal journeys, if you will. Far better, I believe it is, if you have a vast amount of knowledge, a vast amount of experience to share, that you want to share, that you want to help others with, is that you give it to a wider range of people, if at all possible. If it is impossible, that's a different story. But there are mediums out there right now where you can speak to many thousands, and maybe even into the next generation. I'm not going to go into the detail of that immediately, maybe at the end of the video. So what I challenged him with, and some of you might have already figured it out, is is your personal peace, you living out your life quietly, maybe, although there is not really such a thing with how much uh, anti-whites try to get in everyone's uh, lives. It's difficult. Possible, I suppose, but very difficult. Is it worth more, however, to live that quiet, peaceful life for yourself, which is respectable, than, however, reaching out to those many thousands, perhaps, or more, or less, but still many, who will be able to, as a group, take in all of that experience and information and will be able to apply it in their own lives. The information that the person I talk about has is, or just the, the fashion in which he thinks it's brilliant. It's however not for me to share about him. That is up to him, because only he can do it justice. I can only give snippets. Now, <clears throat> whatever he chooses, it is perfectly respectable. Everyone has that, what would you call that? Or I would say I wish that for everyone, to have that quiet, peaceful life with friends and family and your occasional acquaintance. That is, that is all well and good. I also respect those who say, you know what, that personal peace and quiet, I, uh, I'll sacrifice it and I'm putting my head out and I'm going to start doing things for my people at the risk of the anti-white targeting me personally. I understand both points. I take great pleasure in knowing that people are either living one way or the other. I suppose the challenge is, or it comes down to the question now, which is what is more important to you? And let's face it, if you go public, that is when you do most for people. I have over 200-ish subscribers that I am allowed to see on uh, this channel on YouTube that I have. Of these 200 plus people, maybe, what, hope and all, 15 people of, uh, of them or so would have ever known that Hans existed let alone known what Hans has to share. And I have been getting a lot of compliments about that what I share with people, the, per, the new perspective that I like to offer, the, the other ways of, of, I suppose, more or less questioning your thinking itself, your interaction with the world, with society, questioning these things without being over emotional about it. I have helped people with that because they've told me they have been helped. That would have never happened had I decided that quiet, peaceful life. But here is the thing though, I'm definitely being targeted by anti-whites. However, 
it's not as bad as it looks at least from in my experience maybe some people have it worse I cannot speak for that and I'm not gonna play down anything that some some who want to do the right thing are perhaps going through but when I speak for myself the amount of uh, ill attention that I have received I can count these interactions on one hand two or three times tops and all of it pathetic by the way <laughs> all of it pathetic meaningless took me less than five minutes to deal with each separate or maybe all of them combined it was perhaps five minutes and how to handle it Sometimes the delete button was enough. <laughs> Another time, yeah, a few well-chosen words back was enough. And that was always it. Life can still be beautiful, I suppose. And, uh, yeah. There are two figures two historical figures that straight off the bat come to my mind which we talked about in my group is uh, the man known as Arminius that is what he is named by the Romans his actual name yeah pff, it's a difficult one is uh, it could have been Herman Hamer could have been Herman Herman <laughs> if you will in England they call him Herman the German I believe he, um, he and another figure, also pretty well known, Vladimir Tepes, which is an Eastern European fella from, uh, what's it called again, the place? I want to say Transylvania. I hope I'm correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys and girls. Um, both of these men have one thing in common. I'm not need, and I do not need to get into what they achieved later on in life. I need to, only for the sake of this video and this topic, pick out a snippet from their lives. It is that both of them, as children, were sent to school to be raised as enemies of their own people. And what they did was basically recognize the brainwashing they were put under and by force of will, by knowing that they stood by their people no matter what yet yeah, they were always going to stand there it protected them from being manipulated and they became both respected men who achieved great things on behalf of their people whether they were successful in the end or not remains in the middle. That is admirable. These guys could have both chosen even a golden opportunity to just say, "Now nah, I'm brainwashed, I'm going to live the easy life. I'm going to work for the empire. And both of them could have said that, even though it wasn't the same empire that these two uh, were uh, being schooled by. <laughs> but what did they choose? They said, no, that peaceful life, it's not worth it. I'm going to do right by my people. That means something. And that is a choice we all have, that we all share. There have been many, many, I am certain, throughout history, that have chosen a quiet, peaceful life, and good on them. We do not even know in how many ways their lives still affect us today in a healthy, positive way. Totally possible. Even if it is just that they had many children, and some of these children achieved great things too. Although, of course, in both these circumstances you can have many children, I guess. All things considered. Um, But I suppose um, it's worth thinking about. No? I think so. Because here is the big one. They both ended up as leaders. 
I do not like leaders so much, but that is how it was at the time for both of them. There were many thousands, many, that joined them. Many thousands that also chose, said to themselves, this easy life isn't worth it to me. That is to say, it's still worthy, it's still good, it's still something to pursue. But first, we need to go public, we may risk a we may risk our very lives, but we're still gonna go out there, and we're gonna do it for those we care about. For that spirit within, not their specific culture alone. And history repeats itself. Now that choice is up to us, all of us. And maybe I should add, perhaps, that this whole tragic hero stuff is actually also kind of a choice. There are those who couldn't sit still, who couldn't stay at home, who just had to go out there and hated every minute of it. <laughs> These are usually the tragic heroes. And they tend to be the ones who meet a bad faith because, you know, all of the negative energy while still trying to do the right thing. That also teaches us something. Have fun, whichever choice of the two you make. Have a good time. And if one choice makes you miserable, try the other one. Which usually then should be the one that's going to make you happy. I think actually in Lord of the Rings there is also this moment of doubt. Uh, it's a conversation between Samwise and Frodo. And Sam Wise mentioned something like that, doesn't he? About that... How does it go again? There is still some good worth fighting for, Mr. Frodo. He says. As Frodo asks him, why do we do this? Why are we going through this journey full of pain and misery? Why, why aren't we... Right now, in Bag End, you planting tomatoes or potatoes or whatever it is. And Frodo, I don't know, reading a book or whatever it is that he likes to do in his free time. Because there are still some good worth fighting for. And had they stayed at home, had Frodo stayed at home, do you think Lord of the Rings would have been a story? No, it wouldn't have been. That ring would have sat there on the hearth. The ring raids might have come over and it would have all ended there and then. Give or take. That challenge befalls all of us, truly. And then be, you know, Merry and Pippin, Meriadoc and Peregrin. They both are good examples of those guys who join along and, you know, they're trudging through the swamps, you know, in the movies, you see it too. It's like through these mosquito-filled uh, swamps and, you know, like Pippin falls flat on his face in the water which was brilliant and I'm pretty sure was brilliant because it wasn't planned. <laughs> uh, they go through Moria where it's it's just horror. Uh, they're fighting monsters, they have to be on the run from those that want to hurt them. Even getting captured and, and finding themselves in, in unfamiliar, dangerous places. Being a bit lucky, there is that. But those two, always, Managing to stay themselves, if you will. They bounce back from what hardships befall them. And you know why? It's because it's a choice. It truly is. 
there is a, a healthy positive spirit in there. Sam and Frodo don't really have that, but I like to think that's part of uh, Professor Tolkien's excellent storytelling in my eyes, is that you see both sides of it, how it can be. Plus it makes for mm, what you would call decent drama, you know, it's compelling. It uh, brings out all of uh, all kinds of emotions out of the, the reader, which is, you know, a good story has that element to it. Are there more historical figures who were like that? Of course. Tons. <laughs> Heaps. Masses. Could uh, look it all up and... I think if you would start naming them from the first till the last today, would be a damn long list. So yeah, there is a challenge, I suppose. And it also comes down to this. You can make that choice. You don't need a single person telling you what to do. Tapesh, Arminius, both of them. They didn't need anyone to tell them to do what was right or how to go where they went. And all of us have been through schooling today, right? We know how unpleasant it was. These eight hours a day, sitting on a bench. <laughs> your soul withering away. Some might have enjoyed it, for which I am quite amazed. <laughs> Most of us, yeah. That was agony, wasn't it, guys? And we learned stuff out of that too, you know. For example... Why on earth would we let our young go through that? Do we also have... You know, it speaks of a certain nobility, you know? Uh, I've seen that in some elders. They have been too hardship and they've become bitter over it. And petty, in, the, in their pettiness, hashtag not all elders, in their pettiness, they're like, oh, if I had to go through it, well, then the young have to go through it too. So there, yeah, can we be more noble than that? We can. We can because we care. I guess that was a little additional. <laughs> Either choice is fine. We have to realize maybe one more thing. One more thing. If we want the better tomorrow, we have to make work of it. And we have to be good examples to those that are younger than us. A year, two years, twenty years, it doesn't matter. We have to be good examples so they can be inspired by our actions. Doesn't even need to mean they need to like us as as personal as our personalities are or what have you. Do not need to like our habits or anything. Let them at least see that, hey, I do not necessarily like the old the old fella or whatever, or the old lady or what have you. But they're doing the right thing. That is what I can be inspired by. If we can do that for our youths, that would be brilliant. And they will notice that. I promise you, a four-year-old will see that. Will feel that. And you'll have a happier future because there's going to be happier people, more of them, younger, more energy, more, you know, knowing that they have that backup that many of us today never had and perhaps even never will from those who are older than us. Yeah. was going to go somewhere with it, another step, and now it slipped from my mind. Typical, right? Uh, maybe I should just leave it here then. I presented the challenge to a friend, and I mean it in good spirits, because I want... Oh yeah, this is also a very important point. 
I want my friend to do justice to his own efforts. There is a lot of energy and time that went into his explorations, if you will. The explorations of his journey. If he chooses that quiet life for himself, which is fine, I can't say it enough, it is fine, it is okay. You can do that if you want to. But those 20 years of experience, a lot of that will be lost. You cannot just... You cannot just give all your knowledge, you know, that, that lasted maybe half a lifetime, whatever, quarter lifetime, and give it to just two or three other people, or whatever it's going to be. Best to give it to many, far more chance that it's going to spread, which it should, and it's going to, it's going to be remembered. And for those of us who think that we are just meat bags, to, that are just waiting to vanish into the ground and become nothing more than a pile of bones, maybe to be dug up at some point, or that we are, you know, there is a spiritual component to our being. And we go to an afterlife is to, is that either way, memory, remembrance is important. And who knows, if you're one of those who chooses to go public, and you do it with whatever talents you have. If you're a great speaker, you speak. If you're a great, I don't know, a great uh, herbalist, you do it, you know, you show medicinal arts to others. If you are a great plumber, you show how to, people how to plumb their plumbing. <laughs> what have you? That is all in the middle. But you might just be remembered as Tepesh, as Arminius. How awesome would that be? I think it would be. <laughs> that little cherry on the cake, I suppose. <laughs> After a life of uh, doing what is good by those you care about. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. Make your own choice in that regard. You don't need to do it today, you don't need to do it tomorrow. I only recommend that you do it as quickly as you think you are able. The more voices that are out there also, the more people will feel encouraged to join in. And guess what? Those who stand for white well-being, those who are white positive, those who want to stand by our ancestors or gods. If I can tell you this, there is far more of us than there is anti-whites in the world. Even though they are very loud. Not only through quality do we outdo them, I suppose. But if we also do it by numbers, they will be invited to go wherever they're gonna go. Far away from the capacity to hurt whites at any rate. And then we're going to have our happy tomorrow. It's all up to you. It's all up to me. I know what I am doing. Well, <laughs> the full scope of it. You all know the videos I make. And uh, who knows? You will know your full scope. Maybe I will see part of you someday. Maybe I'll know your name without ever having met you. And I'll be able to raise a glass to you. Water, of course. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna leave it there. You all have a good one and bye-bye.